In 1945 towards the end of World War II, a Japanese troop receives a message with orders to retreat. The men start to pack everything and burn anything that can't be taken with them, leaving no evidence behind. While everyone rushes to empty every room, a bunch of men in hazmat suits carry dead bodies and dump them in large piles. Dynamites are also getting set on the wall. Suddenly they hear something pounding on the door with such strength that it makes indents on the metal. Colonel Kato and his men quickly leave the building while some soldiers go down to the cells to shoot down all the prisoners. Other soldiers begin pouring gasoline all over the rooms and the piles of bodies before lighting it all on fire, managing to escape before the door could break down. As Kato goes away in a car, he watches the building exploding in the mirror, while inside a large humanoid creature appears among the flames. Meanwhile Chai Ok and her father Jung Won arrive at Seoul City, which back then was known as Gyeongzong. They learn about air raids in Tokyo from leaflets written by Korean insurgents, but at that moment Japanese authorities arrive and arrest anyone that may have a leaflet, so Chia Ok and Jung Won go away as things get violent. Soon the Japanese cops find the building where the insurgents are making the leaflets and violently bring them down as well. All the people they arrest are given a choice between dying in a torture chamber or fighting for the Japanese army. Most people accept to fight, but Tae Sang ends up in the torture chamber, where the soldiers are trying to make him talk. Tae Sang is one of the most important businessmen in the city thanks to his very successful pawn shop and information gathering skills, but one night during a party, he got arrested by the Japanese army. Commissioner Ishikawa suspects him of having an affair with his wife Lady Maida and when Tae Sang insists he only visited her to deliver a tea set, Ishikawa starts beating him up. However Tae Sang laughs and points out that suspecting his wife of cheating would be insulting a lady, which she wouldn't take well. Then Tae Sang is freed and Ishikawa shows him a picture of Myung Ja, his pregnant mistress who has gone missing. He wants Tae Sang to find her or else he'll be sent to war and lose the pawn shop. Tae Sang has no choice but to accept and he returns to his shop to send his employees to start gathering information. He also learns that lately lots of women have gone missing in the city. Moments later, Jung Won is asking around for information while Chai Ok buys a broken bike for a cheap price. Then she proceeds to fix it herself and drives it to the pawn shop, watching it from afar. At the window, Tae Sang is keeping an eye on Ishikawa's spies on the street and sees her as well. In the evening, Tae Sang startles one of Ishikawa's spies and convinces him to give him a ride. Chai Ok follows them with her bike and sees Tae Sang enter a restaurant. Tae Sang isn't there to eat though. He just wants to use the back door to escape Ishikawa's spies. He's aware that Chai Ok is still following him, so he walks faster into a dark area to then ambush her with his gun. As he demands to know who she is, he notices she's armed as well, so Chai Ok decides to defend herself. After making him drop the gun, she starts hitting him while making sure to kick the gun away from his grasp. Eventually he manages to steal her blade and tries attacking her with it, but Chai Ok picks up a bamboo stick and quickly disarms him again. They continue to fight for a while and Tae Sang takes the stick to hit her in the head, freezing in awe when her hat drops and she reveals her pretty face. Then both of them rush to retrieve their respective weapons and get stuck in a standoff. Tae Sang puts down his gun first to prove he can be trusted, so Chai Ok puts down her knife and explains she's looking for a painter called Sashimoto. Tae Sang isn't interested in helping with cases that won't bring much money so Chai Ok also adds that she's looking for her mother, which makes Tae Sang assume that the mom ran away with the painter. Offended by the implication, Chai Ok slaps him and leaves. When Tae Sang returns home, his employee informs him that she's hired the best sleuths to help him. To his surprise, the sleuths are Jung Won and Chai Ok, who doesn't want to work with him. Tae Sang offers to find the painter and her mother if they find the girl for him, and they accept. In the basement of Ong Song Hospital, Myung Ja sits in a cell with all the other missing women. Kato and a scientist come by and choose two prisoners to take them to individual cells, where they're surprised to find food and water. They immediately start eating and drinking while it's revealed that Kato put a creepy worm in the water. Moments later, Kato is informed that the first test subject is showing symptoms faster than usual. In her cell, the woman is experiencing headaches so painful that she resorts to desperate measures, causing her head to bleed. In the other cell, the second woman is quiet, so Kato orders his men to inject the serum. Soon this woman starts throwing up and something worm-like moves under her skin. Later on, the soldiers bring the painter Sashimoto out of his room and ask him to paint what he sees in the second cell. Sashimoto uses a light to look inside and finds the cell covered in blood with a body on the floor. There's also a strange creature on the wall, which suddenly jumps out at him. A flashback reveals that a year ago, Sashimoto applied for a job at the hospital and was given the task of drawing all the discoveries the Japanese are achieving through experiments. They made him watch one of these experiments, during which a man was cut open while still alive. Terrified, Sashimoto ran out of the room to puke, so a cleaning lady told him that everyone eventually got used to it. Afterward Sashimoto went to see all the prisoners in the cells, noticing even the cleaning lady was kept locked up. This cleaning lady became the test subject and transformed into the creature that is now attacking Sashimoto through the door. He dodges the reaching claw just in time and waits for it to retreat before looking again, noticing a necklace that indicates this is the woman he knew. 
Meanwhile Chai Ok comes to the Japanese command post, carefully sneaking around to avoid the guards. Then she climbs on the rooftops and uses a spyglass to watch how a lady gives a mysterious document to a man, who immediately takes off. Chai Ok immediately follows him and discovers he's dropped off at a place called the Spring Hall office. The next day, the sleuths inform Tae Sang that they found the driver that last saw Myung Ja and made him talk by hanging him upside down. Myung Ja visited Ishikawa's house first and then was taken to Wong Song Hospital, so she's probably being held there. Only people with the right connections can get in, so Tae Sang visits his friend Jun Tech and pays him off to use his ID because his wealthy family is allowed to use that hospital. Afterward, Tae Sang lends the sleuths some fancy outfits and his employee Mr. Gu pretends to be his driver so they can pass off as an important family. The hospital guards accept the ID and once they're inside, Gu pretends to become very sick so everyone's attention is on him while Chai Ok sneaks into the records room. She looks at the files as fast as she can but she's interrupted by the janitor Mr. Oh, so she gets her knife ready to fight. Jung Wan suddenly shows up with his gun and Oh realizes they're part of the resistance, so he cooperates because he's a rebel too. In the waiting room, Gu is about to be given an injection but as soon as he sees the sleuths get out, he announces he's feeling better. At that moment they hear a shot and a nurse says it came from a neighboring military base, but the team can tell it came from underneath the hospital. In the lab, two guards have been attacked by the creature before they could even reach the door, so the soldiers have tried to shoot to keep it at bay. The creature still reaches out and is so big now that it can grab the soldier from afar, and Kato tells the others not to save him because it's part of the experiment. As the creature uses a tentacle to suck the life force from the guy, a soldier decides to shoot anyway and the creature quickly kills him too. Moments later, the sleuths inform Tae Sang what they learned from O. Oh. The hospital has a military ward where lots of people have been brought over from prisons but nobody has come out. The sleuths decide to spend the night there to investigate. Suddenly sirens start echoing in the hospital and the employees kick all visitors out, but the sleuths manage to stay inside with O. In the basement, the soldiers are blasting nitrogen at the creature to calm it down. Soon it falls asleep and the soldiers bring a cage to take it away as they discover the monster is expelling anthrax to protect itself in its sleep. Then they take the cage to the cell area to let the anthrax spores spread around. Kato watches with delight as every prisoner that touches the spores immediately has their skin painfully burning. Meanwhile Oh and the sleuths are hiding on the roofs. The security is pretty tight, so Chai Ok climbs down and carefully sneaks around, dodging guards until she manages to climb a tower to spy on what's going on. She discovers the soldiers are piling up all the bodies hurt by the anthrax. The next morning, news breaks that Ong Song Hospital is closed indefinitely due to an unknown contagion. Soon more soldiers arrive and barriers are put up around the hospital to put it under military supervision. Tae Sang is visited by a nurse from the hospital, who is also a part of the resistance and brings a note from Chai Ok that says we found Myung Ja. The nurse doesn't know what's happening in the hospital but she's seen all the dead bodies, so she begs Tae Sang for help and explains he must send a signal to the East Wing by 10 PM. In the hospital, the staff continues to clean out the cells. Most of the prisoners are dead and multiple soldiers have died or gotten heavily injured. Kato interrogates Major Endo, wanting to know the details of what he calls perfection. Six hours ago, the soldiers push the cage into the elevator to take the creature to its new cell, accidentally disconnecting the nitrogen tanks in the process. The creature woke up and used its tentacles to attack all the soldiers, killing them one by one with quick movements. A soldier tried opening fire, only to get killed as well. When the cage reached level 4, Kato and his men tried to watch the survivors from a vent on the floor above to no avail. The monster had escaped the elevator, so Endo made another soldier close the door. Unfortunately the creature caught the man with its tentacles, thus Endo pushed him to his death to get the door closed and the elevator going up again. The monster managed to stab him too, but the elevator moving quickly and Endo's bullet spooked the tentacles away, allowing him to survive and reach safety. Now Endo asks Kato to kill the creature because it was a failure, but Kato thinks it was a success. Meanwhile the monster just expels the bullets from its wounds. Back to Tae Sang, he starts making a plan to reach the hospital while trying to keep the secret from Ishikawa's spies. He hires some fireworks under the cover of playing Mahjong, then he goes around town for 30 minutes finding the perfect route under the excuse of sightseeing. Lastly he visits the tailor shop pretending he needs a suit, but the tailor gives him a drawing explaining that the painter was seen in the bar. In the hospital, Mr. Oh hides Jung Wan in his cleaning cart to take him back to Chai Ok after sending the message. Chai Ok is hiding a soldier called Choi, who was forced to join the Japanese army but he wants to help his country. He explains that the troops are dealing with anthrax and confirms that Myung Ja is still alive. He talked to her last night while cleaning the bodies, and the stench of death had made him puke. His boss beat him up for being nasty to the point that he rubbed Choi's face on his own vomit. Afterward Choi had tried self-deleting, but Chai Ok saw it all and saved his life. Now Choi gives the group a map of the building before going back to his barracks. In the evening, Tae Sang tries to follow the bartender that received the drawing, who will be meeting with Sashimoto at a restaurant. However his way is blocked by a group of Japanese thugs who are angry because Tae Sang hadn't pawned their pot and start beating him up before taking him into an alley. The leader threatens him with a sword, 
So when Tae Sang fails to negotiate, he decides to fight. He moves fast to dodge most of the attacks and uses bags of rice to block their vision, but he ends up with a wound on his arm and his stomach. Eventually the group overpowers him, only to be interrupted by a cop. But since the officer is Japanese, he pretends he saw nothing and leaves. The leader teases Tae Sang for his country's failure, so Tae Sang kicks him down and escapes. Unfortunately by the time he enters the restaurant, the bartender and Sashimoto are gone. Afterward Tae Sang returns home to take care of his wounds and is surprised to discover the bartender has brought Sashimoto because he wants to help. Meanwhile the sleuths climb around the hospital building and reach the roof, where Chai Ok sneaks inside through the vents. Using the map, she manages to find the lab and goes inside to discover a bunch of jars with human parts like heads, skin, and even a newborn baby. When she tries to walk back, she's startled by something touching her and finds two cells filled with children. She doesn't have much time left, but she refuses to abandon children and starts sending them out through the vent. At that moment she hears a doctor coming, so she immediately has to hide. The doctor notices the empty cells and sees something moving in the vents, so Chai Ok has no choice but to kill him with her dagger. At the entrance, Sashimoto returns to the hospital and sneaks Tae Sang inside by hiding him in his carriage while Jun Tech pretends to be his driver. They go to the meeting spot but don't find the sleuths there, only an arrow on the wall, so Tae Sang climbs out the window. Back to Chai Ok, she guides the kids through the vents, but Jung Wan won't open it for her because soldiers have come to the roof to drink. Jung Wan comes out of hiding to distract them and at that moment, the sky is lit up with fireworks, which were Tae Sang's signal. Using this distraction, Jung Wan starts fighting the soldiers, and soon Chai Ok joins him to help. Together they manage to kill most of the soldiers, but one sneaks behind her and gets ready to shoot. Fortunately Tae Sang arrives and kills him first. In the basement, director Ichiro shows Kato that he's managed to train the creature. He sends three prisoners to level 4 and the monster only comes out when Ichiro rings a bell, understanding that the sound equals feeding. Ichiro just keeps bringing prisoners over to watch the monster kill, saying he wants more creatures like this to create an army. At that moment, some soldiers find the dead doctor in the empty cell so they start searching the building for the culprits. The group on the roof climbs down until they reunite with Jun Tech and Sashimoto, then they use cleaning carts to get the kids to Sashimoto's room. A kid sees the drawings of the monster and screams, which is heard by a soldier outside so he goes to alert the others. When everyone else sees the drawings, Tae Sang tells Chai Ok that the man is the painter she was looking for. Chai Ok shows Sashimoto the drawing he made of her mother a year ago and asks if he knows where she is. It turns out her mother is the woman who became a monster, and Jung Wan has a matching necklace. However Sashimoto lies and says he doesn't know anything. Then Tae Sang gives his clothes to the tallest boy and tells him to pretend to be the driver of the carriage he came in on planning to take the kids out by hiding them as he did. By the time the soldiers come to check Sashimoto's room, the group is already gone. The men hurry down the hall and find Sashimoto and O pushing a cleaning cart, but it's empty. At the same time, the kids have escaped through the window and successfully leave the hospital when they open the gates for an incoming car. Eventually they reach the pawn shop, and thanks to a note from Tae Sang, the employees take all the kids in. Then O and Sashimoto go to their rooms to avoid suspicion. The other four return to the roof to use the vent again, and Jun Tech uses a sword to kill a few unconscious soldiers from earlier. At the watchtower, a guard sees the sword and sends a few men over. When the soldiers arrive at the roof, they find a message declaring Korea's independence. They immediately raise the alarm and all soldiers are woken up to search the area. Meanwhile the person in the car turns out to be Ishikawa's wife Lady Maida, who tells Ichiro that Tae Sang is inside the hospital. She also wants Myung Ja and her baby to be safe, so the soldiers drag her out of her cell and bring her to another part of the building. The creature watches them pass by and learns how to use the elevator. After dropping Myung Ja, the soldiers try to take the elevator, only to find the monster inside. It immediately chases them through the room and kills them all, then it starts running to other areas, killing any soldier that dares to get in its way without mercy. Eventually the entire floor is nothing but a bloodbath, and the creature leaves in the elevator to keep killing in the upper levels. Hearing this, Ichiro adds even more security, which means the group will have to take a different path. As they return to the vent, a soldier on the roof notices the grill is moved and goes down the vent as well. The team eventually reaches a laundry chute and lands in the laundry room, only to be surrounded by soldiers. A fight ensues and while the others try their best to defend themselves, Jun Tech uses the chance to escape. After lots of struggle, the trio manages to kill all the soldiers, but Tae Sang's wound opens up in the process. After Chai Ok patches him up, the team splits to search from Young Ja, Tae Sang and Chai Ok search the second level while Jung Wan checks the third. On their way out, Tae Sang sees the bodies on the floor and is shocked by the creature suddenly appearing in front of him, killing another person. In the meantime, Jun Tech makes it to the cells and finds two friends that also fight in the rebellion with him. Jun Tech wants to know where they hid the dynamite needed for their next strike, but his friends refuse to tell him until they're free. At that moment, soldiers surround Jun Tech and lock him up in the lab. Back to the creature, it tries to attack the duo, so Chai Ok shoots it a couple of times before they run away. 
The monster begins chasing them down the corridors, and the duo manages to dodge another attack before entering a room and locking the metal door. As the creature starts pounding on the door, Jung Wan hears the noise and comes over, setting a trail of gunpowder before shooting at the beast to make it follow him. Then he sets the gunpowder on fire to stop it from moving further. It tries to attack with its tentacles anyway, so Jung Wan makes the flames taller to stop it before rushing to hide in the vents. In the room, Chai Ok and Tae Sang are found by soldiers and arrested. Choi is among them and makes sure to pick up Chai Ok's knife. The duo is split for interrogation, and the soldier who leaves with Tae Sang asks him to set him up with money and a house in exchange for letting him go. Tae Sang will only accept if he can leave with Chai Ok and Myung Ja and is sent to a cell. At the same time, Chai Ok is getting beaten up and almost gets abused, but Kato comes to stop it. After taking her to his office, he thinks she looks familiar and asks for her name, realizing she's the daughter of the creature. Thinking her genes could create another successful creature, Kato gives her a glass of water with a worm. The next morning, Ichiro meets with Jun Tech's father, who is a very important businessman and is shocked to hear his son is a rebel. He pays Ichiro to keep the secret, but after Ichiro is gone, he's approached by Tae Sang's employees with a plan in mind. In the hospital, Jun Tech is injected with a special serum and given an hour to write his comrades' names on a piece of paper. After remembering the good times, Jun Tech cries as he starts writing all the names he knows. Meanwhile Tae Sang reveals to his cellmates that he did make a deal with the officer. A message was sent to his employees, all guards have been removed from the prison, and Tae Sang was given a key. He opens the cell and locks it again after getting out but he gives the key to the others and tells them to wait 30 minutes. As Tae Sang sneaks around, he sees Chai Ok being taken away, and Choi secretly gives her the dagger. In her cell, Chai Ok finds words on the wall written in blood saying I miss you Chai Ok my dear daughter and has a breakdown. In the corridor, Tae Sang hides to avoid being found and when the coast is clear he ambushes two soldiers and quickly knocks them down. Then he frees Chai Ok, who hugs him to thank him for everything before leaving to find her mother. She returns to Kato's office and it's revealed she didn't drink the water. When she asks about her mom, Kato finally tells her the truth behind the monster. Furious, Chai Ok hits him and demands to know how to fix her mom, but Kato says it's impossible in the meantime, Tae Sang rushes down the corridors and after knocking down more soldiers, he reaches the cells, only to find them empty. Suddenly he hears some shots that make him remember the day his mother hid him from soldiers, making him promise he'd survive before she was beaten up to death. Tae Sang follows the noise and discovers the prisoners had been trying to escape but are now blocked by guards. He quickly opens fire and kills all the soldiers before guiding the prisoners out. One guard is actually alive and tries to shoot back, but at that moment the monster finds him and kills him. Everyone starts running away but the creature manages to grab a prisoner and kills him too. Tae Sang opens fire but his shots do nothing and now he has to dodge the incoming attacks. When he runs out of bullets, he notices a nitrogen tank on the floor and makes it blow up, causing the creature to pass out. As the anthrax spores begin to float in the corridor, Tae Sang and the prisoners reach a safe room and reunite with Jung Wan. Tae Sang gives Jung Wan the map and asks him to take away the prisoners while he goes back into the vents to search for Chai Ok and her mom. Meanwhile Ichiro is beating up the soldier that made the deal with Tae Sang for letting the prisoners escape, however he's interrupted by a guard informing him that anthrax is killing their army. To make matters worse, Ishikawa has come to investigate the case of missing women after receiving a clue from Jun Tech's dad. At Kato's office, a soldier comes with the news too and Chai Ok captures him to get his uniform. She takes Kato out at gunpoint, but they find their way blocked by soldiers who want to kill the monster with fire. Kato uses the chance to reveal Chai Ok's identity and someone knocks her out from behind. In town, notes are being passed around to all the rebels to tell them a rescue mission is in order, but the note also reaches Meta. At the same time, someone opens the door of Myung Ja's cell. At the hospital entrance, Ishikawa convinces Ichiro to let him look around, and it's revealed that his truck driver is Mr. Gu, who is waiting for his boss. In the basement, Chai Ok wakes up on the floor while soldiers in hazmat suits watch her from above. Kato explains his team is guiding the creature into the elevator by using nitrogen. At that moment Tae Sang sneaks in and hides behind some boxes, so Choi pretends to talk to Kato to let him know what's going on. Soon the elevator drops the creature in front of Chai Ok and it gets ready to attack, but it freezes when it recognizes her and memories come back. Furious, Kato orders his men to open fire, so the monster creates a shield around Chai Ok to protect her. Then the soldiers activate the nitrogen, so the creature breaks Chai Ok's chains and pushes her away before attacking with its tentacles. Sadly it only kills a few soldiers before it passes out. Chai Ok wants to help her, but Tae Sang shows up and drags her away. The creature is taken to a cell and Taka orders his men to find Chai Ok. Outside, Manager Gu tries to move his truck and is found by a guard, so Gu bribes him with some alcohol. While the soldiers search the building, the duo escapes through the vents and knocks down two guys to steal their uniforms. They team up with Choi and go to the infirmary, where Jung Wan is hiding with the prisoners and almost kills Choi in shock. Suddenly the door opens and they're found by the soldier Tae Sang made a deal with, who brings Myung Ja along with him. 
Then Tae Sang explains they have 10 minutes to reach the truck because they must leave at 6 o'clock. The group uses bedsheets to form a rope and start leading people out the window. Suddenly, a soldier enters the room and catches them red-handed, but Choi quickly shoots to kill him. The sound alerts the rest of the army, so Tae Sang, Chai Ok, and Choi create a barricade in the corridor to hold off the soldiers while the others escape. Soon the troops arrive and open fire, only stopping when most of the barricade is down. Unfortunately Choi gets seriously hurt and he dies. As the soldiers begin coming closer, the prisoners finish escaping, so Chai Ok also climbs down. However Tae Sang doesn't join them and throws the rope instead, wanting to stay behind as a distraction. They have no choice but to leave to survive, so Gu drives away with the group. Tae Sang returns to the corridor to keep up the fight, shooting as much as he can. Suddenly some glass falls on him and he gets heavily wounded, so he decides to escape through the vents. Unfortunately the soldiers can tell what he did and enter the vents to chase him. Running as fast as he can, Tae Sang ends up falling down a chute that drops him into a room full of bones. When he wakes up, he finds a soldier with a gun in front of him, and shots echo in the room. Upstairs, Kato discovers that the glass of worm water is empty. In town, Jun Tech is thrown in the middle of the street for his father to find, which was done thanks to T Sang's employee paying some people off. Meanwhile the bartender is playing music in the middle of the street. In the middle of the road, the truck stops to drop Myung Ja, who finally reunites with Ishikawa. Gu keeps on driving and has to speed up because the cops keep on following him, almost crashing when they make it to town. Fortunately the bartender has started a party in the streets, and the people block the cops' way. Then the officers take another road and are slowed down by a bunch of carriages, so by the time they reach Gu's truck, it's empty because the group has sneaked out through the crowd. Then the rebels help them escape with a bunch of carriages Tae Sang had already prepared for them. While Gu is arrested, the cops start violently subduing the partygoers, causing chaos and blood to take over the streets. But thankfully the sleuths manage to escape without issues. Moments later, Maida learns Ishikawa won't come home because he's with Myung Ja. It's revealed she built the hospital for Ichiro to do his experiments, and now she fires him. To save his position, Ichiro tells her about the creature using Sashimoto's drawings. It turns out it was Maida who kidnapped Chai Ok's mom. In the Bones room, Tae Sang is shown to be alive and the soldier dead. While stumbling out of the place, he leaves a black handprint on the wall. In a hotel room, a sleeping Myung Ja shows a worm under her skin. 